Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. It's about to be Easter here in Sweden. It's Thursday and Easter is like this weekend, like Saturday, Sunday. So I have a few days off. I'm off from Thursday until Monday. And I thought that, hey, isn't this the perfect timing for me to just use one of these days that I have off from work and do a 24 hour readathon. I did one in January when I had a day off and it was great. I really enjoyed it and that video is doing surprisingly well. So why not do another one? If you have watched my April TBR, you do know that I have quite a few books to read in April and I have the physical stack of it here. This vlog won't be about those particular books because there are a couple of other books that I desperately want to read in April for a purpose. And those books are, of course, Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo, the second and the third book in the Grishaverse trilogy. I read Shadow and Bone in March, I enjoyed it, and I want to read the rest of the books before the show comes out on April 23rd, I believe. So that's the goal. So I need to finish these books this month and why not make like a dedicated vlog to them and try to sprint them and read them in 24 hours. That would be so cool if I managed to do that. The plan is that I will be doing this 24 hour readathon starting tonight at 11 p.m. I think and then it will go on until tomorrow night at 11 p.m. And within those 24 hours I just need to try and read as much as I possibly can. Siege and Storm is like 380 pages long and Ruin and Rising is like 350 pages long approximately. So they're not super long. It does total to almost 700 pages I think or even more. These are quite quick reads. I read the first book in three days basically 100 pages a day and if I dedicate my time to reading these books I think I will manage. If I do manage to complete these two books within the 24 hours then I might pick up one of the books from my physical TBR stack. I'm super excited about finally getting to these books. The complete trailer, the full final trailer for the Shadow and Bone show was released a couple of days ago and it looks amazing and I'm still so confused because even though I definitely understood more about the trailer and the show after I read the first book I'm still very confused because there's a lot of characters I haven't really gotten to know yet there's a lot of events that I know nothing about I mean I need to understand shit of course I have read the Six of Crows duology I love that one. The crows are my babies. So I'm very excited about finally completing the Grishaverse trilogy. A completely other note. I went into town today and that was really really nice and I did some shopping and I'm very happy with the shopping I did. So I thought that I might as well do some sort of like mini haul. I don't know, let's just do it. First I got these earrings. I don't think you can see them and if I move any closer they will just be blurry. I also popped into Sephora because I needed to pick up a few things. I got the Pixie Glow Tonic because I needed a new toner. I got the Olaplex number no. 3, like a hair perfecter thing. It's some treatment. I also picked up these three things from Clinique. They were in like a sales pack or something. So we have a mascara, a brown eyeliner, which was the thing I wanted, and a small eye cream. I then also bought like a couple of clothing items. I bought this shirt that is stunning. It's like this kind of lilac or like pink purplish sort of color. And what's amazing about this one are the buttons. It's expensive, but it's beaut beautiful. Another thing I got was this dress. I'm not one for wearing dresses, but I've been getting more into that as of lately, or this last year or something. So I got a dress. I don't know, I might do some clips wearing these. So that's my little haul from town, and I'm very happy with it. Bonus content. Um. Hi. Um, <laughs> I can't take myself seriously. I don't know if I will even post this, because this looks horrendous. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm mentally preparing myself for this 24 hour readathon. It's currently 22.10 and as I said my readathon will start at 11 so still got like 1 hour and 20 minutes to show. So I've done my hair, I did like a hair treatment and now I'm just plopping it so I will take it out soon and we'll see the curls reveal themselves hopefully. And then I put on a face mask because I can. I should never shave off my brows. <laughs> That's the one thing I, I'm learning from this. I'll talk to you later once I'm not deep in self-care mode. <laughs> She's a Mona Lisa. Every day. 
Okay, I'm just about to start reading. I sort of figured out what my annotation means. I'm just having the page with all the grishas and like the different orders of it basically. And then I looked at the map, and the map is quite fun. I'm comparing it to Shadow and Bone. This is what Shadow and Bone's map look like. This is what Siege and Storm ones look like. The world has grown! We have, we have more world in this one. Like this one is basically only Fjerda and Ravka. And here we have we have Kerch with Kerdam, we have Novisem, we have the True Sea. It's like the world has grown. I'm happy to see that. This is the map that's in Six of Crows, I believe, like the sort of scale of it. So yeah, I'm excited. Let, let's get to reading. So long silent movies, the quiet dances on the screen. So long the burning slowly. Smelling sweat and kerosene And all the actors on the stage are rolling cigarettes And whispering so low Call my parents up Good morning, my hair is a mess. I'm gonna reassess that later, try and get some life into my curls. They always get a bit wonky when I sleep. I'm a hundred pages into the book now. I finished last night at 65 pages. I was a bit tired, but then I continued this morning and now I'm on page 102. Although I am already a bit stressed about finishing it today, but I, at least I'll be able to finish this book. That's the goal. And then do as much as I possibly can in Ruin and Rising. I've been tapping it a bit. There hasn't really been that much to tap. I'm conflicted about this book. I guess I don't just feel that connected to the characters and the story perhaps that might be it i'm not too sure first of all i'm undecided whether i ship alina with the darkling or with mal i do really appreciate the moments that mal and alina have with each other i'm leaning more towards mal i think mostly because the darkling has been such a douche in this book although mal isn't the most exciting character either i like tamar tamar is a new character in this book i like her i think she's friendly and nice and cool and has a bit of Inesh vibes. And what I'm really appreciating with this book is how the world is expanding. I mentioned it that the map is bigger or larger in this one. I like that we're getting more world building and learning more about the world and the different parts of the world and like the countries and what they think and such. When I started reading Six, Six of Crows, I was very confused for the first 50 pages or so. So I do understand that if you have read these books before reading Six of Crows, you will understand the world and the magic system more. Of course, that's not needed. I read Six of Crows first without understanding shit, <laughs> and that worked out fine, but I appreciate getting a better insight now. There's been a lot of action, so I can't complain that it's slow or something. I'm undecided. And now I'm gonna grab some breakfast and then perhaps do some more reading. The goal is to finish this book today. So long, silent movies Waking early, staying late
Y'all, everyone is talking about Darklina, Malina, the Darkling versus Mal. I'm here for Nikolai. I feel like I'm gonna be a Nikolai stan. God, these kids. I guess that he won't be a romantic interest for Alina because otherwise I would have heard about it. I'm sure he will have his own romantical plot or something. But like, guys, I stand Nikolai. He's cool. He's funny and he's cool. The Darkling is very dark and man is like friendly and cute and sweet but boring. But like, Nikolai? He has some sass. I like Nikolai. I finally have a favorite amongst the characters in Shadow and Bone. This makes me very happy. I'm a Nikolai stan. Y'all, why didn't you tell me about him earlier? I would have picked up these books so much earlier if I knew about Nikolai. Please don't ruin him now. I've only just met him, but I love him. So please don't ruin him. We can ignore the Darkling. I just need like Nikolai and Mal and like this sort of triangle thing that is sort of going on but not really. This I like. This I'm up for. I don't care about the Mal Malina, Darklina triangle sort of stuff. I'm just here for Nikolai doing whatever he needs to do and teasing Mal in the process and then Mal and Alina making up for that. I don't want to spoil shit but I'm finally feeling things for some of the characters in this trilogy, so I'm very happy about that. I stand Nikolai, I'm now excited for King of Scars. This is gonna be good. I switched around, my back was getting tired sitting in the chair, so I moved to the bed, made it a bit cozy for me. And I'm officially more than halfway through the book. I'm on page 216. I'm definitely enjoying this middle part, this middle thing that's going on so much more than I enjoyed the beginning I guess. The last hundred pages or so have been great. So yeah, I'm gonna continue with this. It's the final sprint over at Steph's channel. Then we'll see what I'm gonna do. So it's like, what time is it? Almost half past seven. So a bit of time has passed. What have I been up to? Well, I watched the final episode of Little Fires Everywhere together with my mom. And that show is just so amazing. I love it so much. I then have watched a bunch of YouTube. I just watched Yen Im's video, her announcement. And it made me a bit emotional. I've been watching a channel called Friendly Space Ninja, which is basically like this movie or show commentator. So he has done some videos about Gossip Girl, Twilight, Emily in Paris, uh, Pretty Little Liars and basically is talking about how messy the shows are or like what how it went downhill and like they are really good so I watched two of those videos now and I watched some of them before so I will link his channel down below as well. To the matter at hand we have Seashell Storm. I'm still reading it. I'm on page 275 about to start chapter 18 so I have like Almost only 100 pages left of this one, which is quite good, I would say. I am confident that I will be able to finish this one today. And I'll do my best to also try and start reading Rune and Rising. I'm certain I won't complete both books today. I took like a break. I chilled out. I've had some coke and not that sort of coke. Have you seen those TikToks where people try to order Pepsi at the drive-in? <laughs> and they're like, one Pepsi please. Oh, we only have coke. I'll take a gram. I'm oh, sorry, it's so stupid. I've had some coke and also some chocolate, some marabou. This is a new taste, a cookie dough taste. It's quite nice, actually. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna read. That's what I'm gonna do. Talk to you later. I've only read like 15 or 20 pages and Mal is being such a douche right now. And I'm shiny AF. Mal is being such a douche. He, he was going like this for me and in just like three pages he's going like this. In some ways, I feel like I want to compare him to Gale 
from the Hunger Games because Man knew Alina beforehand and same thing with Gale. He knew Katniss before everything that went down in the Hunger Games. They do have this sort of connection and they do love that other person, but they don't realize it. Neither of those guys realized it until the girl started to gain power in some way. And then they can admit that they have feelings for that person. But then once the girl starts gaining more power and somehow enjoys it or tries to use it for a purpose, suddenly those guys, they just get so insecure about like every potential threat and like other guy and Mal is messed up majorly. And he, he has the guts to rub it in her face that she doesn't have a lot of experience with like kissing and stuff. Come on, dude. Don't do not do that. So Mal is definitely falling in my eyes. Still haven't formed an opinion about the Darkling. I definitely stand Nikolai. I don't necessarily stand Nikolai with Alina. I like them separate. I like them as like friends and like colleagues or something or like allies. But I like Nikolai on his own. He's my favorite so far. I'm gonna continue. I just needed to rant about Mal being a dick. I just finished Season Storm with half an hour to go. I did think that I would finish it earlier, but I was suddenly reminded that it's Friday and on Fridays we have this new TV show called Masked Singer going on in Sweden. I know it's an, a concept from uh, Korea and that they've done it in the States as well now and such. So I watched that and that took like one and a half hour out of this readathon for me. I finished this book and I'm so happy and I do think that I will try and just get like a small start on Ruin and Rising and perhaps continue to read it even after 11 p.m. Thoughts about it? I think I prefer it to Shadow and Bone, but like I rated Shadow and Bone like three or 3.5 stars and i'm not convinced that this is a four star book but it's better than 3.5 i'm very in between with this one i have to think about it the thing is i didn't really care that much about the first 100 pages or so the pacing was a bit too fast but then entered nikolai and i love nikolai and i loved everything that happened after that so everything back at the little palace and such i loved i that i really did enjoy and then the ending once again was a bit rushed i think or um, not too rushed it wasn't too bad honestly i felt like this was more like a build-up to the third book obviously action-packed but i did prefer when there was a bit of a slower pacing not too slow it was still eventful with everything going on at the little palace and with Mal and with Nikolai. So those are kind of my thoughts at the moment. So I'm not sure if I will give this a three star or a four star. Definitely happier with this book. And I am excited about Rune and Rising. I'm mostly excited about Nikolai, to be honest. I am officially a Nikolai stan, and that makes me very happy because I do have King of Scars, which I think is like the Nikolai spin-off book. Honestly, at first I was like, Ugh, why should I care about this prince or king? from the Shadow and Bone series that doesn't really seem to have any important part because no one, no one ever talks about Nikolai and I don't get why. Stop talking about the Darkling and Mal. Nikolai is where it's at. Happy I finished this one. Gonna, gonna put it into Goodreads now, put it into my reading log and then pick up Ruin and Rising. Kiss me slow.
Telecaster Would you be here in the fall In the long December Pull me closer So, hi friends. It's Sunday now actually. So it's been more than a day since my 24 hour readathon. I just thought that I should do like a quick wrap up and outro of what happened basically. During my 24 hour readathon I started reading and finished Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo, the second book in the Grishaverse trilogy. I'm so happy that I read this book in one day. It's about 380 pages. Like reading that within 24 hours I'm quite pleased. I definitely can do better. I still want to challenge myself to like honestly dedicate an entire 24 hours to reading because I still slept for like 8 hours and I still like did other things but I'm still happy that I finished this book. I did finish this with half an hour to go before my 24 hours were up. When I went to bed, even though it was after 11 p.m. I did do a bit of reading in Ruin and Rising, the third book in the trio. So far I've only read like 30 pages. I can't count this to my readathon because it was after the, the deadline of the 24 hours. I've started it so it means that I will finish it that much sooner basically. But back to Siege and Storm. What did I think of this one? I didn't like it that much the first 100 pages. It didn't stand out. It wasn't anything new or special compared to the first book. But then after the like 100 page mark or something like that. I got more into it and the main reason why I got into this book was because of Nikolai. And I'm such a Nikolai stan. Like I think he's awesome and great and I love him. I'm very happy that I met Nikolai. I don't necessarily stand him as a romantical interest to Alina. Not necessarily. I like him on his own. I think he, used, he has some sass, he has some confidence, he has a plan. He's quite honest so far. Please don't pull a the Dragon Republic on me. I'm still hurt by the things that happen in that book. So the pink tabs in the books are for things I enjoyed or things I had fun with and most of these pink tabs are for when Nikolai did something. That was like the biggest win of reading this book was that I got to meet Nikolai <laughs> and I said <laughs> I'm like the Darkling who? Man? Who? So I personally think that this little 24 hour readathon was a success this time around. Yes, I said at first that I wanted to read both of these books within 24 hours. I quite quickly though changed my mind and said that I would be happy if I finished this book and got a start on this one. So I would call it a success. That's it for this readathon. Thank you so much for watching. I honestly have so much fun when I'm kind of just like challenging myself to doing these shorter readathons. Definitely a struggle, but if I know that I have the day off and I have nothing planned for that day, I think it's so much fun to challenge myself this way and also to try and come up with different clips and content for the vlog basically and b-roll and stuff like that. Hopefully you will see more 24 readathons in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, goodbye! Don't think about what comes after or what came to